Niin, terä. Good morning. I will start with my presentation from the time that covers a period of 12 years ago. The time on the when on the 26th of September I got this information um, uh, that that a kind of a, a human uh, mm, uh, remains have been found and uh, ancient items have been found near in Salme. But whether this is a, a, or a, it is not, it was not clear whether this was uh, really something that was interesting for us. But until uh, Arnold Hunt uh, from the War Graves Association went to the spot and found, in addition to human remains, some an, an old piece of iron. And Arnold Hunt actually thought that it was part of a box or something, but this turned out to be a piece of a, a shield, a piece of a sword. So this is how it all started. On the 30th of September, Hans Kraut contacted me. He was uh, uh, chief inspector of archaeology of the um, Heritage Society. And he proposed that I go and look at this stuff. And since I was just finishing an expedition in the Western Estonian um, then and I had my team still together, so I got my team, sent two of them uh, ahead of the whole team and then on the 3rd of October the next day on the 3rd of October on Throloblus Traili Altme Mati Mandel and another guy from Keila so we all went to the spot and took a look at what was there so this is how it all started as you can see from the slide which is which is the wrong slide sorry so this is where Salme was this is the surrounding area around Salme a little bit towards more towards the Serbia Peninsula and so this is the narrowest place where the Serbia Peninsula, Peninsula joins the mainland of Sarema and then there is the uh, old strait which is now ca uh, called the river of Salme and then two of these uh, real ships were there. So th this is what we saw at the beginning. We've been working on this photo for uh, some days already. Some of the sand has been removed, but most of it is still there. So this, looking at this landscape, it was clear. Can you see another picture here? So it was clear that the finds, uh, they were already um, information that we had before starting our excavations. So there were some kind of funny figurines. Uh, there was a lot of uh, archaeological ethnographic uh, material here that we used for spinning. But why should we have so many of these items like that because we never had such things in Estonian archaeology. They turned out to be uh, gaming pieces of this special game. Well, archaeologists did not know uh, did not know what they were and did not recognize, shame on them if, that they, for not recognizing the gaming pieces. And the other items, when you look at them, you can see that they are pre-Viking era. It is difficult to say what uh, what what time precisely? So we were arguing where, whether it was the sixth or seventh or eighth century, and so that pretty much around that time, our guess was right. And then there were rivets of the uh, ship. There were also pieces of uh, wood left there. So that means that these were parts of the of the uh, ship that uh, had not been burned, but at the same time, the uh, some of the metal pieces of the sword uh, were definitely had some indication of, of burning. So there were two things here. 
the rivets and the bones and the gaming pieces, they do not really fit together. In addition to this, from the oil, we found a lot of burnt uh, pieces of uh, um, bone. And given that in Saarema, mm, uh, the Saarema, this uh, uh, underground burn, uh, excavating uh, mm, mm, burials were uh, taking place as well. So we, And then some people s thought that this may be also something from the Second World War because there were heavy battles there. And on the coast you can always find rivets of, from ships or boats. I've been uh, uh, excavating a lot here around the coastline of Saarema and you, and you always find uh, the boat rivets uh, either from uh, Midsummer Night uh, uh, or something else. And then I also mentioned that there were burnt pieces of bone uh, that we also found. So we had bones that had burnt and items that also had been burnt. So we came to the conclusion that this uh, site has to m be made as large as possible. So it was eight times eight meters mm, from where we removed the soil so we uncovered such a large area and uh, we and so we found this very dark uh, layer it was quite near the surface so 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 we found one uh, end of the ship and the other end of the ship we found in the the other uh, side so we didn't have to um, extend a lot from what we had originally uh, uncovered or set aside as, as a place to be excavated or area to be excavated. So we got finds, lots. This was a piece of the arrow and also the bones uh, we had three um, uh, skulls and the general opinion was, before we found the ship actually, the idea was that it must have been the burial site for the Second World War. But that is, it took a lot of time uh, for us to make, to make the decision because the anthropologist couldn't, uh, wasn't available. So we had to uh, hurry up in order to get all this material out. You can see a gaming piece here among the bones, which shows that it has been uh, moved, and we lot we found lots many, lot, uh, lots of other um, gaming uh, pieces, and also, and the bone pieces of bone were also messed up. There was a piece of a skull here, other pieces of bone. And among them was uh, also a uh, foot. So what was the foot doing there? Or bones of a foot. So at that point we couldn't figure out what this was. And, and it seemed to be in situ, properly, uh, on its place. But uh, later, uh, 2010, when we started excavating the other sh ship about some meters to the south, and we were looking for the other end of the ship, then we found uh, another pair of um, bones of a feet, foot. And you can see here, in this wall, so you can see here, in the wall, a profile that shows that it, it's been uh, dug up through all these layers. And the dark uh, uh, shape there, I, I, yeah, I got the wrong slide. So, so the dark uh, layer here, the dark layer here, Here you can see the dark layer. Uh, 
you, re you should remember this because I'm going to speak about this later as well, because this shows the level where the uh, where we found the second ship. It is clearly a later burial, and we got this whole uh, skeleton as well. And uh, we haven't conducted the carbon dating yet, but uh, uh, it is quite clear that this could be a Second World War 1944 skeleton from a, a soldier that fell in the battles of 1944. In my opinion, uh, the the foot also had to do with this. So I do not think that the bones were just uh, thrown ar around in the second, uh, the first burial. Maybe uh, in a sitting position, yes. And here you can see up in front uh, the some uh, shape of a, of a skull here. So we haven't uh, uncovered the ship yet, but from the, this layer uh, we started finding the rivets later. Ülokestlane finds the ship here. Um, he was he was uh, excavating there in the trench and he f uh, and he found uh, rivets, boat rivets, and I asked them. Uh, to make sure that uh, uh, that they remove some of the natural soil away, and and I also added a label here. This is a part of a letter from Marke Gonsakutin Lukvist from 20 uh, November 2020, and this is where she says. The ship has never been that far. So this was in our final report of the study as well. You can really see that uh, the sediments have been dug into it. So earlier we thought that the sediments had been uh, added later. How this happened, whether uh, the sea had uh, brushed away all the sediments or so, how uh, these uh, rivets have been found on this layer and not higher. If the boat had been uh, uh, buried uh, higher, then the rivets would have been higher as well. But uh, this is also a problem that we noticed at the second uh, ship. Then I asked them to continue digging, and the girl on the right had found some rivets uh, next to this bucket. Then I asked Ulo, to see if there were other rivets on the opposite side. So when a very important find was uh, made, then the um, bonus, and the bonus was what you can see on this uh, photo. So it's been all properly uh, recorded when the first ship was found. It was the 9th of October at 12.38. So we followed now the uh, uh, rivets and we got the ship. Next day, everybody is present. We can see Tunu Veldra here, must be here. So he was the person who came to the spot first and he since he was also in charge of war graves, uh, German war graves, and, and so he was trying always to say that this, these must have been German uh, soldiers that were buried here of the Second World War. And on the 10th of October, Marge Gonsa arrived, and we are studying what we have found. So the excavations continue, and then the the.
question arises uh, about the ship and also the sitting position of the bodies. And Marge Konsa in her article clearly states that, that the bottom of the boat was about 20, 30 centimeters. Uh, uh, oh, the, uh, the boat had about 20, 30 centimeters of sediments so or material in there, either gravel or sand. And then there was a darker layer where they also had finds. And as we, as I showed you earlier, the um, skulls were also there on the same level. And in order to bury someone uh, in a sitting position, then you only had very little room, 10 to 15 centimeters. So this is out of the question, actually. So my opinion is, even if I cannot prove this, but you cannot disprove this either, that the the bones were, well, not the bones, but the bodies were buried next to each other, just like uh, in the other ship, and 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 two other bodies were uh, placed on the one in the bottom. So, as a minimum, the number of uh, bodies must have been seven. So, this is the layout, which is more probable than uh, uh, burying someone in sitting. And the uh, grave, they've been uh, buried very uh, carefully, uh, very uh, specific uh, grave goods, uh, characteristic of elite persons, like gaming pieces, um, pieces from uh, uh, at least three swords, the blade and the hilt, uh, parts of one or the other. We could see them also in the photos. And also a, b a blade of a double-edged sword. And the hilt belongs to the so-called West Finnish type according to Salmo, which is very sp high, well spread in Finland. And, and the <clears throat> blade is very, very massive of this, uh, of this type of uh, sword. But what we found seemed to be a, a very light uh, sword. So consequently, already using uh, the knowledge that we have about swords, uh, shows that we found double-edged swords, at least two of them. And uh, this place has been dug up several times. Uh, and there was a, uh, already at the 18th of century, 18th century, there was a road across this place. And in mid 19th century, uh, there were uh, also uh, trenches uh, dug there. So probably uh, things have gone lost and everything is not on the place where they uh, originally were put, plus the Second World War. For example, the single foot, uh, like we see in Ukraine, when you can see small holes on a, in a road uh, that a small caliber mine has, uh, uh, has uh, fallen there, and you have, and the result is a very small crater there, maybe half a meter in diameter. And if someone mm, got um, hit there and lost the foot there, then this had to be placed somewhere. So it was placed in this hole there. But this is my theory. But I do not believe that um, this person died on the same spot. Yeah, be because this was a very proper uh, setup of bones of this foot. Other bones were all messed up. But it is not possible to um, figure out how this actually was. And another thing. Let's go back a step. You can see uh, the finds here. This, this part that is on the other side of the trench. So we found from there pieces of combs and also iron rivets. And uh, one piece of the comb was also here, on this spot, in, of the same comb, actually. And according to Lina Moltres, uh, the same uh, 
group had uh, bones of a goat, uh, uh, and the, the different parts of the same bone came out from different places. So this uh, separate part here uh, probably does not have anything to do with the boat or the ship. And here, this is a nice find here on the edge of the trench because the whole body of the uh, items was somewhere further to the left. And you can see here uh, also uh, iron rivets. So this could have been one end of the ship. But the ship doesn't lose in its uh, respectability if it, if it is a little bit shorter. Now we have come to spring 2010. Uh, and then the que problem uh, came up with the iron items, especially the swords, because we found another um, set of objects uh, from another trench where the men were standing. Uh, there was a cable trench for electricity. So there was a new uh, trench dug. And in the course of this digging, they found exactly the same items uh, that we found from the first ship. The pieces of swords, human bones, and they were dated, and you can see pieces of sorts that are actually at the time when we were working with these uh, items. No one uh, doubted that these came pieces came from one and the same sort. But after analysis, uh, after the analysis, uh, we find that one part of it has been. Uh, uh, burning, burnt, and the other not. This shows the difference. But we also were uh, trying to establish the composition of the metal. But it was the same for other vessels. So we were back to square one in this. They could be or could not be parts of the same sort. Ragnar Sager promised that with, in her, his project, he is uh, ready to do some laser ablation uh, on these pieces uh, for more specific analysis, then maybe we will be able to prove eventually whether these are parts of the one of the same sort or not. So if they are not, then we have to figure out something else for them. If they are the same, then it is one event. This is uh, how I've been thinking uh, to date, that both of the ships have been buried at the same time because the datings were precisely the same. Uh, 1320 plus minus 30 years for the first ship. This was dated in Helsinki, and the other. Oh, this this are the analysis applied to human bones, and this, for the second ship it was just the same dating. 1320 plus minus 30. So we started digging. We had to dig very rapidly, and we. We just had to pick out during a few weeks these items. But it's more than 10 years, and we still are at it. So the whole area was uh, covered with uh, mm, stones. There were darker areas, and you can find a piece of a hilt of a sword. At that point, we didn't really understand it, what it was. And then there were also some uh, uh, stones, which was a clear sight that everything has been uh, messed about there. And uh, the Estonian Power Company has uh, dug four or three uh, cable trenches through this. So it's not possible that uh, there's another ship under there. But it wasn't the case. So if sometimes later, we started finding items. On the one side, on the right hand side, you can see a piece of um, shield. And on the left hand side, there are swords, two swords. So they have been found from the sides of the 
ship. Uh, they were under stones first, under the stones first, and then on the other side, oh, if you find the shield, a part of a shield. So here are the finds, and and dog bones were on top of the shield. This is really important because the dog has been uh, positioned in such a way that uh, that even uh, tail bones were on the spot or present there. So you you can s take a look at the right. Uh, this is a gravelly area. And we go start getting bones from there. Stratig stratigraphy shows that the dog's, um, uh, the dog's bones are higher, so that the, the dog has been buried later than the others. But Lena is going to speak about this uh, in more detail. But the dog goes through the bones also of the other, uh, the bo uh, bottom layer. And so his hind legs are in contact with the human body. And the head is uh, uh, underneath the elbow of the second layer. So the dog seems to be like a um, mm, structure that brings the layers together. <clears throat> when you look at the tail bones. And then, uh, so, so the hind legs and the uh, head uh, connects the middle layer and the bottom layer you cannot uh, bury later than the ones on top. It's easy, isn't it? Again, here we can see uh, the bones coming out, the skeletons coming out. Now we have arrived uh, at the sand layer and a simple uh, calculation uh, someone says that this is such a huge task uh, to put the uh, sand there, it is, but it wasn't such. The layer wasn't that thick. It was maybe 15, 20 centimeters, maybe at one some points 30 centimeters, but in general 20 centimeters. And here's a uh, calculation. So the the area where the skeletons were found. Uh, was 12 uh, uh, square meters, so it's about six cubic meters of uh, sand that was necessary. I've been doing a job like that as a school girl, and the, our task was a schoolboy. So my task uh, was to uh, move uh, one cubic meter per hour, and I got 15 copics for that. So this is not a big job. And. There's also a possibility that when the burial took place, then eventually they uh, filled up a kind of a mound there as well. But at the same time, they must have removed some parts of the vessel and covered it with uh, first with stones and then with some gravel or uh, sand. But subsequent storms might have also pushed this away. So I'm. Uh, I am uh, hurrying up now. I've been telling you the main things now, but you can see this uh, line here. Uh, Matti Salmisto from Helsinki University thought that um, this could, uh, could be created by the uh, stem of the ship, and you can see the profile of the stem very nicely here. And this is just reflected back here. So after the burial, uh, the sea reached up this area. Once again, the same thing. Now let's look at the bones and skeletons. So now we can come the, to the question of the chamber. Um, burial chamber. Here up front, I can't even see properly, uh, must have been here, must be here. Uh, there are some uh, zigzags. So uh, another trench has been dug and you can see what it looked like. 
This is 2012, the plan of 2012. Then the dark uh, layer here wa was on the level of the ship, and the other trench r reaches up to this uh, with an ang at an angle. This must have been some kind of a power cable uh, uh, for for the power cable or for the uh, Second World War time trenches. So this is definitely a part of the. Um, digging and it had also ruined some of, of the burial site. I showed you the dark layer here and you can see this uh, as well. And this has been covered with sediments. Let's go further. In the bottom here you can see a gravel layer and this must have been maybe the place where they took the sand in order to put and on the ship and to cover it. And when you make a hole uh, like this, you can get su such rusty water uh, into this hole because this is seaside water. Um, I didn't dig through everything, but it is possible to go and check it. And if you have uh, extra funds for that, then it, it's possible to go back and check it. This is 2011. Here's a thick layer of uh, concrete. This was another story. I have no time for that. But we had little shovels to uh, dig this, and we had lots of nice golden things from it. So you can see the different uh, um, sites. You can see things like that. And also a little bit about the datings. Here's a table where you can see the uh, different of, of uh, bodies. And the guy in the middle, uh, 1302, on the right, uh, 1320 rather, this is the bone that was, because it was precisely the same as the one in the first ship. But you can see there's uh, different layers, and on the highest level is uh, one of the oldest ones and then there are the four brothers that were mentioned earlier mentioned earlier and one close relative as well up there either a grandchild of this character here it should be here so the grandchild of this guy so it's a very interesting uh, layout Here's a table for the datings. So we can see that uh, they covered both ships and the datings are very similar. And in Uppsala University, they created this. So if people have all, have all sorts of problems uh, eating uh, badly and so on, uh, in inverted commas, obviously, uh, so, but they also uh, study, studied the um, uh, animals, the goats, and, and their bones. And you can see that, uh, that the, the bones are quite, uh, entirely different in the one ship and the other. But when we look at them, uh, jointly, then you can see that they are just the same, just the same. So it is um, not possible to say why this is so. And they have taken also material from the more bottom layers. You could say that the younger ones are more uh, in the bottom. So, uh, so there are many problems and we have no answers why there is such a variation in the carbon dating. We calculated the things as well, and uh, since the Salme event could take place at around 750. And thank you for your attention, said Wachtmeister, um, although he's already behind the dog, he's already in the dog paradise now. But he also would like to say thank you. It's a Napole uh, Napolitan Mastiff. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Yuri. Are there any questions? 
Questions to Yuri. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, um, uh, I'm asking in Estonian. About the dog. The dog that was buried and the, the, the tail was higher than the other layers. So when the tail was higher than the highest layer, that should mean that the dog was buried as the latest. No, I do not agree with this because the uh, dog must have been buried in the second layer. Uh, but what about the tail? And then they were covered with uh, earth and the head had already been fixed and there was uh, buried um, not uh, horizontally but rather not quite horizontally because when the tail is higher then it should show that every that the dog must have been as a, as a last person it's not possible but then but then uh, but the, the 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 so this is very difficult to understand so this was my question thank you for your question ni mm. eh aha ni kas ah there are further questions from among the audience Uh, in the hall. <laughs> yeah. Um, on so, the if the burials were contemporary with each other, I understand that the material culture was slightly different um, in the first boat burial compared to the second. How do you interpret that if they are indeed contemporary and not one earlier and one later uh, ex expedition? Mm. Uh, uh, what was it? Yeah. Uh, et kui um, um, oli, et uh, kui leiu materjal oli mõne võrra eri when the material culture was slightly different in both boats. Material. So, so the, I guess the premise that the fine material was different for the first and the second boat. Uh, very, very uh, was Yuri does material. not agree with that premise. So, uh, um, I guess uh, that answers your question. Okay. <laughs> If there are no further questions from among the audience, then we would like to thank Yuri.